Hello there, Mr. Sutton bringing you this lesson on volume. As this title suggests, we're going to be finding volume using solids of revolution. So let's define what we mean by a solid of revolution. This is a three-dimensional object created when we rotate an area around an axis over an interval. Um, so I think an example will help here. Let's say that we take the area between y equals one-third x minus four, shown in the graph below, and the x-axis. So this area right in here, and rotate it over the x-axis itself on the interval from negative six to six. So here's what this looks like visually. I'm gonna rotate this around the x-axis, and as I do that, it carves out a solid object. This solid object here is our solid of revolution, and we're gonna be finding volumes of these things today. At this point, let's talk about how we might go about finding volume using something called the disk method. So recall that to find area between curves, we chopped up the area into an infinite number of little distance strips and added all those distances together to get an area. Well, when you're finding volume, we're gonna chop up a solid into an infinite number of area slices and add those together to get the volume of the whole solid. So you could think of a solid as just kind of like a stack of pancakes and we're chopping them into infinitely thin pancakes and adding all those together to get the whole yummy solid. Um, so in general, we can say volume then, since we're adding a bunch of things together, is going to be an integral along some interval of whatever your area is. Now taking a look at our pancakes and our cross section here, the area of a solid revolution appears to be a circle at this point. So we can use pi r squared and add all those pi r squareds together. The catch though, and you'll see that I wrote a of x equals pi r squared, the catch is that we have to express this formula in terms of x because we're integrating in terms of x going horizontally here and we, need, we have this dx in here so we need something with an x in it. Well, the radius itself is the distance from the axis of revolution to whatever your function is at each input value. Um, so in this picture, for example, our radius would be this f of x function itself. But it doesn't have to be the function itself. I mean, if this was uh, shifted up so that your axis was the line y equals one, then it's just the function minus one. It's whatever that distance is, is going to be your radius. We're gonna do a few examples finding volume now. On this one, we're trying to find the volume obtained by taking the region under f of x and rotating about the x-axis along the interval from zero to nine. Um, so take a moment to graph this out and then see if you can use the formula to actually find that volume. All right, so going to my grapher, I have this entered in my y equals, and let me do a, a zoom six just to see what this function looks like. I mean, it's a square root function, shifted a little bit. I'm also gonna draw out the line x equals nine. X equals zero is the y-axis, but I like to see this other one just for my visual effect here. Um, so let me go to second and program, option four for vertical, and then I'll just put in nine for the x value there. All right, so this is the area, and I'll just draw this here. Uh, this is the area that we are rotating about the x-axis. Um, now in order to actually do that, I need to have an area formula to put inside my integral. And that area formula has nothing to do with this area, really. It's just the area of those circles that this is going to turn into. Um, so for that, we're going to need to know what the radius is. And I think pictures really help to visualize what the radius is. So in general, the area that we're integrating is pi r squared. And this is a function of x. Um, but now to find this r, we look at our picture here and we see that our radius of these circles is gonna be the distance between our function, f of x, and the x-axis itself. So for this formula, I'm going to write just pi times f of x, because that's the distance between the function and the x-axis, it's just f of x minus zero. And that's being squared. Next, I'm going to put that in my volume formula, so I can write volume is gonna be the integral from zero to nine, because that's the, the length of this. And then we're integrating, I'm just gonna put an a of x dx. I mean, I already wrote out what a of x was here, so why write it again? Now I just do this on the calculator. And just to make my life a little bit easier, this makes my life easier anyway, I'm gonna actually put my a of x in as a separate function. Um, so I'm gonna write, this is gonna be pi 
times, and this is just f of x squared. Um, so in this case, I can just do alpha trace and pull up y1 up here and square that. And now there's my area function. Quitting out of that, I'll do math 9 from 0 to 9. And now I'm just integrating that y2 function I just put in my calculator, dx. And that's going to come out to a value of, pause, pause, there we go, 268.606. For our next couple examples, we're going to take a look at a different kind of situation. And that is when we have a situation like this, where, for example, we want to rotate this area around the x-axis. This is a little different than before because now we have a space right here in between our function and the axis of revolution. When there is a space between your area and your axis, like in here, you're going to get a different look when you rotate this thing. If we rotate this, here's what the solid would end up looking like. We're going to end up with a hollowed out look because we have this kind of empty space in the middle of our solid. So how do we deal with that? Well, let's take a look at the cross sections because that's ultimately what we have to add together to get this whole volume. Our cross sections are no longer circles. We now have kind of a donut shaped cross section which in math terms we're going to call a washer. Uh, so here's a, a representation of a washer. To get the area of this washer, we have to take into account that we now have an inner radius, which I'm going to call little r, and an outer radius, which I'm going to call big R. To find the area of just the donut instead of the whole circle, we need to take the area of the outer radius and subtract the area of this inner radius. So subtract your inner circle from your outer circle. Algebraically, we, we're just using circle formulas, so we kind of have big, uh, so pi times big R squared minus pi times little r squared. That's one way you could find that area of the donut. But in practice, we don't like writing pi too many times, so we usually factor out this pi and write this as pi times big R squared minus little r squared. Uh, so this right here is our formula we're going to be using to start things off on all problems that have this space between our bounded region and the axis. So let's go ahead and try out one of those washer problems. For this one, we're rotating the, the region bounded by radical x and x squared around the x-axis. Take a moment to graph this out and see if you can use our new improved formula to figure out this volume. So just like before, I'm immediately going to go and give, put whatever functions they give me in my calculator in y equals, if it is a calculator question. And let me do zoom 6 to get the basic shape of these. So there's my square root. There's my parabola. Let me zoom in a little bit. Zoom 4 is what I just did here. And we have this little bounded region right here between uh, 0 and 1, it looks like. All right. Um, so to figure out where these actually intersect, I'm actually going to set these functions equal to each other and, and figure that out on my grapher. So let me do second trace, option 5, intersect, and move my spider over to this intersection here. Enter three times, and we do indeed have an intersection at x equals 1. Great. We also intersect at 0, of course, at the origin, and 1. Um, so I'm going to be doing an integral from 0 to 1 of some area function. What is that area function? What are the areas of my cross sections when I revolve this thing? Well, they're donuts because I have this space in between this bounded region now and the axis of revolution. So I'm going to be getting a hollowed out look to this solid. So that means I have to use this formula, pi times big R squared minus little r squared. And really all I have to do is figure out what big R and little r ought to be. Big R, again, that's the radius of the outer circle if we were to revolve this thing. Um, so that's just going to be the distance from your outer area, your outer region, your outer uh, line of your bounded region to the x-axis in this case. Um, that's just going to be a distance of, let's see, this is the square root function. So that's just a distance of f of x or square root of x. So I'll just do pi times f of x squared. But we're not quite done. We also have to subtract the little radius squared here. So our little radius, that's the inner function here, the distance between this inner function and the x-axis, which in this problem happens to be just g of x. x squared tells you exactly how far this part of the bounded region is from the x-axis. So we'll do minus g of x squared. 
And now I'll just uh, write out my integral. I have the integral from 0 to 1, this is representing my volume now, of these donuts that I just wrote a formula for, so a of x dx. And this is kind of a stylistic difference. Some people like to put all this craziness inside their integral. I like to do it up here and then just put a of x in here. Um, do it however you want, but at some point you're going to have to do this part on the calculator. So I like to put this area formula inside my y3. And one of the reasons I like to do this is if I mess up the integral, then I can just go back and change this instead of having to rewrite everything from scratch. So I'll have pi times parentheses. And now uh, f of x, that was y1. So I'll do alpha trace y1 and then square that. Minus alpha trace y2 squared, because that's where I put my g function in y2. Close my parentheses. And now get out of there and do an integral from, in this case, 0 to 1 of alpha trace y3 dx. And I get about 0.942. Didn't take too long there. So there we go. We're going to do one more problem. So for this one, we're taking the volume obtained by rotating the region between radical x, y equals 2, and x equals 0, the y-axis about the line y equals 3. Uh, pause the video, graph this out, and then see if you can handle this new situation. All right, so going to my grapher, I have the functions square root of x and 2 in my y equals. And let me just zoom 6 all this to see what we've got. So there's my square root. There's this other function. So we have this kind of bounded region between my horizontal line and my square root, which I'll show right here. But we're not rotating this around the x-axis anymore. This is a little bit different. We're rotating this now about the line y equals 3, which is up here somewhere. It's actually right here. I'll just do a, a dashed line there. You don't have to draw that on your grapher, um, but I'll put it there just so we can see what we're looking at. So just like with all these problems, in order to uh, find this volume, we're going to need limits of integration for this bounded area. Obviously, 0 is our our starter, our lower limit of integration. Um, but how about the upper one? Where does square root of x equal 2? Well, you could probably do this without even using the calculator. If you want square root of x equals 2 and you, you set them equal to each other, just square both sides, we get x equals 4. But you could use the intersect function on your calculator if you wanted. So we're going from 0 to 4 with some area formula. So in general, we're still going to have washers here um, because there is a gap between our bounded area and our axis of revolution. So that hasn't changed. Um, but how to find these radii is going to be a little bit different. We're still going to be doing top minus bottom distance strips for each radius. You just have to keep in mind that the distance between your, your function and the axis of revolution is no longer just the function itself because we're no longer just doing your function minus the x-axis, minus 0. For our big radius, for example, now that's going to be this lower part here, because this is further away down here from the axis of revolution. It's going to be the distance between your axis of revolution and this lower function. So that's a distance consistently of 3 minus f of x. So we're doing 3 minus f of x squared. That's our outer radius. For the inner radius, well, take a moment, if you didn't already, see if you can figure that out. So that's going to be the distance between the axis of revolution and this uh, inner function here, the function that's closer to the axis of revolution. That's going to be 3 minus 2, which we're going to square. I mean, that's just 1 squared, but I like to write out 3 minus 2 so we can see where things are coming from. Um, at this point, everything is the same, though. We're still going to do an integral, this time from 0 to 4, of a of x dx. It's just this a of x that keeps changing. So I'm going to put this in the calculator now. So I've started putting my a of x function in my y3 here. I don't want to try writing all this inside an integral. Um, so I've got a pi parentheses, and then I have an inner parentheses with 3 minus my f of x function squared. And then I'm going to subtract. I could write 3 minus 2 squared, but I know that's 1. Um, so I'm just going to write 1. You could say 1 squared if you really want to. Close that. Get out here. And now let me do integral from 0 to 4 
of alpha trace y3 dx. Let the calculator handle the rest. And this is going to come out to how much? 25.133. This concludes our discussion of volumes of revolution. Lots of cool 3D applications of this. And the best part about this stack of donuts, zero carbs. Till next time, Mr. Sutton signing off.